Hey guys, today we are going to be kicking off a crash course on digital filters. Now, if you're here for my DIY flight controller series, well, we are absolutely going to be implementing some of the stuff we learn in this series for that project. But if you're just a struggling engineering student doing a course on signals and systems, perhaps, well, this is absolutely for you because digital filters can really be quite a topic of confusion and it really doesn't need to be. Well, without further ado, let's just jump straight into it. So what on earth is a filter? Well, the best way to think of one is by imagining a little black box where some sort of signal goes in and some sort of signal comes out. Now, the job of that black box, the filter, is really to change the frequency spectrum of the signal going in. So the signal coming out has a frequency spectrum that is shaped to your desire. And that's really it. At the end of the day, a filter just changes the frequency characteristics of a signal. Now, I'm assuming at this point that you already know that a signal can have both a time domain as well as a frequency domain representation. But if that concept sounds a bit alien, to you, well, check out this link in the description below. It's a video by 3Blue1Brown, who I'm sure you've heard of, and it does a great job explaining just that. So with that definitional sort of stuff out of the way, the main topic of today's video is to categorize filters into four main categories. The first one is called a low pass filter. And just as the name suggests, a low pass filter allows low frequencies to pass through and attenuates or cuts off high frequencies. Now, a great use for one of these is in cases where you have some sort of sensor data. And if that sensor data is susceptible to a high frequency noise, well, you want to pass that data through a low pass filter to get rid of the high frequency noise and just keep the low frequency signal that you want. So as a sort of example, if you have the gyro data coming out of a quadcopter like this, you'd expect a nice clean signal. But the problem is with the motor shaking about and all the vibrations and electrical noise, you actually have a jittery signal like this on top of your nice clean signal. And you really want to pass this through a low pass filter to get rid of all that high frequency noise and just extract the clean signal that you want in the first place. So having talked about a low pass filter, the next one we're going to look at is called a high pass filter. And this really does the exact opposite. It gets rid of all the low frequency components of the signal and keeps just the high frequency components. So where might this be useful? Well, think of a sensor that in addition to its normal variations of its sense data, it has some sort of drift over time where slowly it it sort of falls out of spec, out of calibration. Well, how do you get rid of that or how do you compensate for that? A high pass filter does just that. So maybe let's think of a, a temperature sensor where over the course of a day, it measures the temperature fluctuations, but maybe over the course of months or years, it kind of starts to drift a little bit. So that's a great application of a high pass filter to get rid of that drift, which is not desirable and keep just the actual data, which we want. All right, so having defined a low pass and a high pass filter, we can now look at what's called a band pass filter. And this is just a combination of the previous two. It gets rid of both the extreme low end of the frequency spectrum and the extreme high end and keeps just a band of frequencies that you desire. Finally, we have what's called a band stop filter. Now, this is sort of the inverse of a band pass filter. Instead of just allowing a certain range of frequencies through, it blocks a certain range of frequencies. And this is great when you have just a small range of pesky frequencies that you want to attenuate. So if you're a photographer, then you probably know what this is. This is a UV filter and how you use it is, well, you take your lens and you whack this on top of it and it gets rid of all light in the UV range of frequencies. And that is a great example of a band stop filter. It eliminates all frequencies within a certain band stops that band of frequencies from passing through. And of course, if you were to look through it right now, you shouldn't see much of a difference because there's not much UV light in my room. So it, it is doing what it's supposed to. It's allowing all the non-UV light in my room to pass through. But if I were to shine a black light or something through this, then you would see a big difference. So those are the four basic types of filters we have. We have a low pass, a high pass, a band pass, and a band stop filter. And I'm gonna tell you right now that we're only gonna be caring about the first one, the low pass filter. Why? because the other three types are just combinations of low pass filter. If you think about it, a high pass filter is just one minus a low pass filter, and a band pass filter is just a high pass filter plus a low pass filter, and so forth. So going forward, I'm only gonna be deriving things in terms of low pass filters, but you can easily generalize this to any type of filter because other filters are just combinations of low pass filters. So hopefully that was a little bit useful and interesting to you guys. Now I'm gonna be posting videos like this, more instructional tutorial type videos, in addition to my DIY flight controller series and other project videos. So if you're interested in either one of those, well, just hit the subscribe button and you'll be updated. And I'll catch you guys next time.